Hi, Cecilia. Hi, Heidi. Hello. Hello. Oh, Heidi's gone. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> so how's your weekend going? You said, uh, I think it was yesterday, you said you had a, a lot of work to do this weekend? Yes. Is it going well? Mm, quite fine. I'm a little behind because I'm uh, attending Colingo classes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's okay to be behind because of that. <laughs> It'd be worse if you were behind because you were watching TV or something. Uh, I've got a window. I have that. Bit. Okay. Great. And uh, do you have any plans for the evening, or will you will you be working all day? Uh, I've had scheduled one with this class one, two, three, mm -hmm. four, five. I have six Colingo classes. Oh my gosh, six in a row or just uh, in total? In total, in total. Okay, in total. Yeah, you might need yeah. a break. <laughs> yes, I'm going to have a lunch break. Okay, good. But I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to have a siesta mm -hmm. because instead of having a siesta, I'm going to have my assignment, which is. Uh, finishing my didactics portfolio. Yes, you are a hard worker. I need to um, imagine, Brigitte, that I'm no longer a teenager mm -hmm. and I have a commitment because uh, I am working mm -hmm. in the field that I am studying, so I have to be yes, responsible. I have to do it. That's great. It's a great thing. <laughs> well, tell me about your studies because you told us that you were uh, in German. No? Yes, I'm in Austria and I'm I'm learning German right now. Yes, and and uh, it's hard <laughs> because but these long words and sentences and sometimes <laughs> this is what the words look like to me sometimes. <laughs> So long. Word. One it's, word. That's not a real word, but that is, uh, that is what uh, the word uh, looks uh. like. <laughs> I thought you were telling me the truth. I no, I'm I'll so naive. They are, they are that long. <laughs> I'll show you the longest word in German. Um, it's crazy. Here it is. This is a real, actual German word. It's crazy. That's what does that word mean? It means um, a ship captain, a steamship captain on the Danube River. It's the name for a steamship captain of the Danube River. And why do they have one word for such a long phrase? Because I don't know. Is, and now I'm reading an article that I have to include in my portfolio mm -hmm. that is called Lexis, no? And uh, if it's a Lexis, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a chunk of words. Yeah. Why do they have no pause? No, I don't know. No, it's crazy. <laughs> but they, I they might say our languages are crazy. I think so, because yeah. Why don't they put them together if, if one thought? No? Yeah, it would be easier, maybe, they think. <laughs> but I'm taking classes, and uh, it's good. I, it's going okay. I'm learning a lot, little by little. Of course, yeah. yes. It's a little process. Little, definitely. A long process. <laughs> A long process, like like that word, a long. Yeah, it's, it'll take me a long time, just like that word. <laughs> nah, it won't take you that long. You are young. We'll see. We'll see. Well, in this class, we are going to talk about the passive voice, and we are also going to talk about uh, sexism and how Google uh, shows just how sexist we we still are in this world. Um, but we'll look at that in a minute. So I assume you've taken many classes on the passive voice. <laughs> so tell me, Cecilia, what is the passive voice? 
the passive voice is either when you are not interested in who does or did the action or when it's more important or relevant who receives the effect of what uh, the action mm -hmm. um, is uh, the effect of the action is done mm -hmm. um, or, yeah. or yes basically said yeah when the when the person or the thing doing the action is not important so the thing receiving the action becomes the star of the sentence becomes the important part of the sentence yes. and the formula let's say is the verb to be plus the past participle of the main verb and if we include the agent we use by as a preposition okay yeah and let's let's look at some sentences first to talk about uh, when we use the passive voice because there's many different situations where we might use it but in general it's not used that that often in everyday speech um, so I'm going to give you an example of a sentence with the passive voice and I want you to tell me why you think the passive voice was used here okay Okay, so the cave paintings were made in the Upper Old Stone Age. So first of all, why is this sentence passive? Because we don't know who made them. Exactly. I mean, it was done by nature. Ah, no, 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 no. It was done. It was, no, 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 the cave paint, not the paintings themselves. Uh, it was done by the cavemen and as we can't identify them because there was no register of their identity uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we they they are known to us that's why we say the paintings are more relevant than the the people themselves exactly the, so here, here maybe maybe we don't know who did these paintings so the actor or the person doing the action is unknown mm -hmm. and that's one one reason why we would use passive voice because we just don't know know the answer okay let's look at the next one how about this one an experimental solar power plant will be built in the Australian desert here the fact or of a building up a solar plant mm -hmm. it's so relevant so important that uh, the scientists who will build them in Australia come in a second stage of importance exactly yeah the person building it becomes irrelevant we care more about the power plant actually being built and we care about the company that's going to build it they become less important. What about this one that you've seen probably many times or heard many times from politicians? Mistakes were made. Uh, this is personal. Huh? Uh, I think that they politicians try to uh, keep anonymous because they don't want to take responsibilities on the mistakes they have um, done. Mm -hmm. I how I use it proper to make a mistake they make had made. Yep, they, they, made. Had, they, they made. Mm -hmm. uh, from last class, what <laughs> I say? From the mistakes they have made. Mm -hmm. So they keep anonymous and then they say mistakes have been made. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They're trying to keep things vague and vague. anonymous. Mm -hmm. it's yes. It's a way of delay. And do you hear this kind of thing from politicians uh, where you are as well? All over the world. 
all over the every, world. Every speech I listen, they say, mistakes have been made. Okay? <laughs> it's a way of... So it's not just our president then? No, 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 no. no. Okay. If they put the blame, if they put the blame, it's a head that is going to be chopped off. Oh gosh. It's going to roll. <laughs> okay. How about this one? Rules are made to be broken. That is like a general assess assertment or yeah, general, general truth. truth. Mm hmm Exactly. Perfect. So we're not we're just talking in general. Rules are made to be broken. Uh, when would you when would you use that phrase? Give me an example. Uh, for instance, uh, oil and water don't mix. Scientific language. Okay. I would say. Not so much the scientific language in this case. But facts, facts. With uh, with scientific language, yes, you would use um, you would use the passive voice. For example, if you're doing an experiment, like uh, with directions, when you're doing an experiment, for example, uh, the sodium hydroxide was dissolved in the water. The metal was cut. It doesn't matter who did these things because what what is more important are the directions of the scientific experiment, right? But rules are made to be broken is a, is a general truth or a saying that you might say to someone, uh, for example, um, have you seen the popular movie uh, Flash or Footloose? No. No? Okay. It's about, no. A, <laughs> it's about a group of kids who uh, live in a town where you're not supposed to dance. <coughs> it's illegal to dance. So the kids might say to each other, rules were made to be broken. Let's dance. Rules were made to be broken. So we're supposed to break these rules. Rules were made to be broken. So you might hear that phrase when someone is trying to convince you to do something that might be illegal or you might not, you might not supposed to be doing it. Rules were made to be broken. Sorry, what is again the name of the film? Uh, oh, Flash. Ah, Footloose. Yes, of course I watch Footloose. <coughs> and she oh, dances. Know. Yes, the, the main character dances beautifully. Okay. Yes. <laughs> well, there's. have you seen the old one or the new one? Because the old one is Pro with, with Kevin Probably Bacon. Probably the old one. Probably okay. the old one, yes. Yeah, the old Do one. Do you recommend the new one? I've never seen it. Ah, I, would, okay. I would say no. Okay. This is the the poster for the old one with Kevin, a young Kevin Bacon. Okay. Yes, I watched the old one. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, it's a good movie. It's very funny. Okay. <laughs> good. Exactly. So those are all the occasions uh, when we use the passive voice. So we use it when the actor is unknown. We use it when the actor is irrelevant. Uh, when we want to be vague about who is responsible, when we're talking about a general truth, like rules were made to be broken, um, or when we're talking about a scientific experiment and we're looking at the language of a scientific experiment. So those are all ways in which we use the passive voice. Any questions? Okay, cool. So let's just do a quick uh, pronunciation exercise, which I'm sure you are a star at. I'm not a star. <laughs> so, I, I twinkle, twinkle, but I'm not a star. <laughs> I twinkle because I doubt a lot. I doubt. So let me ask you, when we're talking about ED endings, when we're talking about ED endings, what are the what are some of the ways we pronounce an E D ending? There's three ways. Yes, T, mm -hmm. the D, and E. Exactly. The one is voice. The other one is voiceless, and the other one is the extra syllable. 
the extra C level is for the TD ending. Exactly the yeah the, the is ending. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. the voice uh, endings are uh, K, uh, CH, SH. Mm -hmm. Those are the, the voiceless sounds. Voiceless. Mm -hmm. the, the voiceless. voiceless. The voiceless. And the rest are the voice, mm -hmm. like um, uh, P, B, B, mm -hmm. um, G, Y, yeah. G, Y, G, So can you give me an example of uh, an ED word that has the T sound at the end? Uh, watch, watched. Watched. Exactly, yeah, watched. Um, talk, talked. Talked, mm-hmm. Good, yeah. yeah. Walk. March, yes, march, marched. Marched, mm-hmm, good. And what about the D sound at the end? The D sound would be the voice, no? Mm-hmm, the, the voice. voice. Uh, beg, begged. Mm -hmm. uh, open, opened. Yeah, good. Open, opened. Good. And what about the I, the IHD sound, the id sound? Voiceless. Um, it's the extra syllable sound. Yes. Um, uh, I can't think of anywhere. Um, so we only use the uh, post. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, for instance, um, um, uh, per. No, I can. I think of. Uh, so think of a word that ends in T or D before the ED is added, and that's when we use. The id sound. T -O -D. So, mm -hmm. for example, wanted, wanted, uh, needed, needed, needed. Yeah, exactly. So when the word ends in a, a d or a t before the ed is added, that's when mm -hmm. we use the id. Wanted, needed, needed. planted, planted, invent. Invented. Exactly, invented. Good. So that's a little uh, trick you can use for that, knowing when that sound is appropriate. Okay, wonderful. So before we move on to the article, we're going to do a little experiment. So I want you to open um, a, a Google, a window with Google search. Okay. How do I do this? Oh, Cecilia. You know this. Google search. Yeah, open a open a new window in your internet browser. Open internet. a new tab. Yes, I have I have a new new, new pestaña, nueva pestaña. Okay, and go to google.com. google.com. Mhm. Mm <laughs> What is a Google.com? Google, you know Google.com. Yes, Google, but Google.com. Yes, or maybe it's not .com for you. Maybe it's whatever your searches end with. Like in Austria, it's .at. Oh, I get nervous. Don't be nervous. <laughs> I, but I got a, I got a, let's say... I got like a place where I can write whatever I want. Yes, that's what I want you to have. Okay, I got it ready. Okay. So I want you to type in the search in the search bar there where you can write whatever you want. I want you to type women shouldn't. Women shouldn't. Women 
should. And don't press enter. Just type women shouldn't. Then. And do you see under the search bar many, many examples coming up? Shouldn't. The teeth meeting. Who shouldn't? Do you see examples Sh coming up underneath the search bar of things you could... Shouldn't. Shouldn't wear pants, shouldn't be allowed to vote, shouldn't go to college, shouldn't uh, shave, shouldn't be president, shouldn't be president. <laughs> yes, okay, exactly. So when I type it in, I get women shouldn't work, women shouldn't be in combat, women shouldn't vote, women shouldn't be cops or police women. So, yes. do you know uh, do you know how these searches why these why these things are coming up on your computer? Because some articles have been written about these topics. Mm, no, not exactly. And no idea. So the way that Google Google does this so that it makes it easier for you when you're searching that if you don't, they want it to make it quicker for you, right? So you can quickly yeah. go down and choose one of those options if that's what you were going to type. So the way they fill that out is by taking the most popular searches and adding them here. So the most popular searches in your country or in your, maybe more like in South America, uh, mm -hmm. that area of the world are those searches. Um. So the most popular searches dealing with women shouldn't are actually those searches. So people are actually typing in women shouldn't vote, women shouldn't be cops, women shouldn't work. How does mm -hmm. that make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> the first one shouldn't wear pants is so, <laughs> is so segregationist. Yeah. So, because we in Uruguay, out of ten, nine wear pants. I am the only one at at my institute who wears skirts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, I am the only one in my forties. The rest of the girls are in their twenties. Mm -hmm. And but the girls wear pants. Of course, and have the teachers. For a long time. Yes, the teachers are in their 50s mm -hmm. and wear pants. Mm -hmm. I agree. So let's look at, we're going to look at an article written about this phenomenon. And here's the link to the article. Uh, how funny. Thank you for making me do this experiment. <laughs> You're welcome. And you did it well. You were nervous, but you were able to do it. Thank you. So this article is called The U UN Ads Point Out How Bizarrely Sexist Google Searches Are. So if you look at the first picture there, it's uh, the picture of an advertisement that was created by the United Nations. And if you scroll down after the article, there's, there's some more pictures there of women, um, and it has the Google searches. Um, and if you zoom in, you can see you can see what what's written there. But are you able to see what's written in each of the posters, or I can show you a different picture too? I'm coming <clears throat> because they're a little bit small. Because I wouldn't know how to zoom it. That's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> Okay, here's a, here's a link to just look at the pictures for now, the second link here. Let's see. It's so slow. Okay. Newscom.au technology. Uh-huh. Okay. So the, yes, what is, women cannot drive, be bishops, be trusted, speak in church. Mm -hmm. And now scroll down past the article and look at the other, the other ones here. 
uh, have rights, have rights, both work, box. Mm -hmm. And the last one? And then, um, uh, put in their place, be put in their place, know their place, be controlled, be disciplined. Mm -hmm. Ah, because of the country where she comes, because she she is from an an uh, an Muslim country. That's uh, why. Yeah. So no? it it says in each of the ads, um, it doesn't say what country that these ads were or these searches were done in. Um, yes, but, but they're actual real searches. No, but the one that says uh, women need to. Mm -hmm. She's got a she's got a yeah, scarf head. on her head. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's why it says what it says about and the discipline and exactly. And what does it mean to be? What do they mean? Be put in their place or know their place? What's that phrase mean? That uh, they have to be at home, cooking and taking care of the children. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, so let's read the, the first uh, article link I sent to you, the one with the smaller pictures from The Consumerist. Um, so it says, the autocomplete suggestions on Google searches are often good for a laugh, but they can also provide some measure of insight into the scary collective psyche of the Internet. A new, and a new series of ads from the United Nations uses these autocomplete results in an effort to demonstrate just how pervasive some sexist attitudes are. The ads each feature a photo of a different woman with her mouth covered by what the UN claims are actual Google search results for various phrases about women. For instance, one search that starts with women need to is auto-completed with Stone Age sentiments like be put in their place and be disciplined. While simply typing in women should, auto-completed with suggestions like be slaves and not speak at church. The ads are shocking because they show just how far we still have to go to achieve gender equality, says the copywriter from the Dubai-based agency that created the ads for the UN. They are a wake-up call, and we hope that the message will travel far. Um, so why do you think the UN has created these advertisements? Mm. What message do you think they're trying to send? I think they are trying to make a they are meant to be food for thought. Okay. Food for thought. Okay. And can you read um you see at the bottom of each of the ads there's a tagline you can see it on you can see it on the first picture there in this article. Women should have the right to make their own decisions. Mm -hmm. Women should have the right to make their own decisions. And um, and so, what do you think this ad will will do for people? For example, a man seeing this advertisement, how do you think it will make him think uh, differently? If he if he is into the uh, the thought of the tag, he wouldn't like it. If he's into the thought of the of the what? Of the tag, the one in white. Mm, the tagline, yeah. Yes, he the tagline. He wouldn't like it, I think. Okay. But probably his children, his and her children would start thinking about it mm -hmm. and uh, their their offsprings their grandchildren would start uh, 
uh, would start thinking differently. Okay. So it, at least it can be, at the very least, a conversation starter for people or a mm -hmm. thought starter for people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Yeah, I agree. Um, and do you think that people believe that sexism no longer exists? Yes, I think that some people do think there there's no problem. Uh, for instance, <clears throat> where I study in the second year, we ha we have a, a career of four years to mm -hmm. become a teacher, and I am in my second year. Mm -hmm. And in the second year, we have a workshop of uh, sex. It's called sex. Mm -hmm. And one of the topics was a uh, gender, mm -hmm. and uh, the teacher brought the this uh, this topic of se uh, sexism, mm -hmm. and the young the youngsters in the class thought that this didn't happen because as they, it didn't happen in their generation, they thought it didn't happen. And we started searching information. Mm -hmm. and, and we found that w even when it didn't happen among a uh, middle class, uh, uh, intellectual middle class, it did happen in upper class. Mm -hmm and in lower class mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in our country and of course it did happen in other countries around the world and it was very revealing for these young people mm -hmm. and it was it is very important for future teachers because you deal with teenagers we will be dealing with teenagers and with children mm -hmm. Okay, so they, in the end, they agreed with you that, yes, their sexism still does exist? Yes, with the teacher's aim. Yeah. To aware us, to make us more conscious about the issue. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Brigitte, because I'm going to forward this uh, article to my teacher. Even when we have finished the workshop, mm -hmm. we have a... a, a um, uh, an email address mm -hmm. of the group, and I will forward if you allowed me. Yeah, of course. So she, so she has it for next year for her future groups. Yeah, it's a great, uh, it's a great article. I think it's a great ad campaign as well. Um, and it was a really wonderful idea by this agency for sure. And do you see sexism? Um, in your country, do you see certain jobs that are only jobs that mostly men dominate? Yes, yes, yeah? yes. Uh, uh, little by little, uh, we see, for instance, uh, in uh, jobs like bus driving and taxi driving, and engineering mm -hmm. and building construction mm -hmm. and uh, of course uh, uh, medicine like surgery mm -hmm. uh, um, or in law um, uh, judges uh, more women in parliament more uh, senators. There were the, there had been deputants, but senators there were less women. Yeah. And there there are more uh, senators that are women. But for instance, we hadn't had uh, a president who has been a woman yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. the U.S. has not. And <laughs> not either. <laughs> <laughs> There are a couple. So. There are a couple in the world. That we... Yes, in Brazil, mm -hmm. presently they mm -hmm. have a woman. 
Yes, so if we have the wave going up and down, perhaps yeah. it arrives. And you know. everyone says that Hillary Clinton is going to run for the next one, so maybe uh -huh. it's possible that Hillary Clinton could be become could become the first. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I, I was reading another article um, recently about how uh, women also are, are usually encouraged to act differently in the workplace than men. And when women do things uh, that men do every day, uh, like raise their voices or get angry when they're passionate about a topic, uh, they're seen much differently than their male counterparts. Do you think that's true as well? I think we complement. Uh, I think that what we have is uh, I define women as round okay. And, okay. and men like straightforward. Okay. We have the ability of starting many tasks at a time and yet dealing to be able to finish them. Okay. We, we spread like open up many tasks at a time. <laughs> yes. Like we are in, we are in the kitchen. <laughs> Multitask, yes. We, we are in the kitchen and we start the fire with the milk in the oven, we put on the radio, we start uh, preparing the toast, we keep an eye on the children in, in the bedroom, uh, all at the same time. When <laughs> men, if they are going to prepare breakfast, they put the milk to be um, heated and they, t they stay still there till the <laughs> milk heats up and that's done. They are, but they do it perfectly. Right, but they have to do one thing at a time. <laughs> it, that's I, it. Too bad there's no men in the class to defend themselves. To see no, but I'm not attacking them because no, they I'm, do it perfectly. They yeah. do it perfectly. Perhaps they do it better than us, but they do one thing at a time. Like when they, it is. That's why they are footballers, better <laughs> footballers perhaps than us. We are the. Yet we play football now, but they are perfect. They tend to be perfectionists. Okay. Because but they focus, focus. Ah, I I have a, a a partner at one of the two schools I work at, mm -hmm. who is a a teacher, but he is. Uh, his uh, function at school is to be outside of the class. Okay. Or, calling the role and administrating and okay. he's a history teacher mm -hmm. and he told me that it's a matter of uh, it's an anthropology uh, issue between men and women mm -hmm. that we, they had been uh, learning this historically because we were inside the cave taking care of the fire of the children and of the food while they went out uh, to hunt or they stay in the cave taking care of the whole of the cave watching if an, uh, a huge or a small uh, prey uh, animal came mm -hmm. and they have to be assertive with a spear to kill the 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 wild animal so they had to be assertive mm -hmm. while we while we were taking care as you said of multitasks yes that makes sense that's why we are different mm -hmm. of course I, I agree I think we we are different and that's okay that there are differences but do you think women are treated differently when they when they act the same way as a man might act in a situation. For example, um, a politician getting very angry and, and yelling about uh, something that makes them upset, a man doing it versus a woman doing it. Because oftentimes uh, women are criticized, uh, oh, she she's, looks so ugly and she's so horrible and she's so mean. And when a man does the same thing, it's said, oh, he's very stern and he's very passionate about what he believes in. 
Yes, yes, I think there is a matter of competition because mm -hmm. some people uh, are afraid of losing their territory. It's like, uh, like having established like uh, fences mm -hmm. of dividing the ground as if the ground was limited, not unlimited, and that we could uh, spread knowledge and power as if it was a, a constrict. Instead of sharing mm -hmm. and widen it, we have to... Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's frustrating. We could get much farther, I think, if we weren't if we weren't That's doing those kinds of things. Yes, yes. I feel the same way about different political parties, especially in in the US, how they when they don't agree and they work so hard against each other. And one yes. party does this and the next party brings it down. And then mm -hmm. one party does this and the next party takes it away and there's no mm -hmm. progress made. Yes, who suffers? <laughs> the final, the final consumer, the the yeah. final citizen, the first one that gives them the vote, that mm -hmm. one is the one that suffers. Yeah. So is it it's the same with politics where you are? In of, your course. Yes, <laughs> of course. Of course. Oh, so disappointing. Though, no, we have a difference between okay. Uruguay and the states. Is that uh, the vote is compulsory? When you get to eighteen. You have to vote yes or yes. Oh. It's, mandato it's mandatory. So what happens if you don't vote? It, what, what's the you don't, you, you, you don't find a job. Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. So as a, you, I, I believe that this is a more sorry. I don't mean to be aggressive no. or, okay, I'm or not intrusive or intrusive or anything, but I feel that our democracy being participant because we participate mm -hmm. a little bit more because it's not an active participation. Mm -hmm. At least you become militant, an activist in your party if you have a belief in politics. Mm -hmm. right? uh, I think it's a way of participating more than in your case, because sorry to say, but I think that the leaders of your tra two traditional parties, mm -hmm. because you have more than two parties, yeah, but the but two the, traditional parties, yes, the two big ones are a kind of uh, a lead the country. A, they don't really care too much if the people go into the elections or not, but for the moment of their campaigns. Mm -hmm. if, if they do vote at the moment of the campaigns, better. But during, in the meantime, it's not that important. While uh, the people, the politicians in our country, do care a lot in the meantime mm -hmm. because they know that uh, it's along all the period that they will be watched by okay. every citizen, every mm -hmm. adult citizen, because we vote, we have voted them, and they have, they are backed by our. Uh, decision. That makes sense. And so people are more engaged in what's going on because they know they have to vote. So they want to make a vote that counts and a vote they agree with. And how often do you have your your general election? How how many? Every five years. Every five years. Every five years. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I never knew that. Because we are okay. very small. <laughs> But do people are people appreciative of this system, or are there people who have tried to change it? Uh, there are uh, uh, many opinions about it. Okay. Some people appreciate it more because we had a dictatorship from 1973 to 1985, and there 
in during the military process we couldn't choose a uh, presence or the chambers okay so in that case we after that people started appreciating more the the chance of choosing representatives mm -hmm. okay interesting I'm learning a lot today I also learned this morning uh, <clears throat> that in in Thailand uh, and once you go to a movie theater they uh, the king is very important in Thailand and if you go to a movie theater the beginning of the movie is a salute to the king and everyone has to stand up and uh, honor the king at the movie theater which I thought was yes. quite interesting. I was at, uh, in your class when uh, Ipcob was no who said so it, uh, it, oh yes yesterday yesterday, yesterday. And epic. I taught a class on it this morning mm -hmm. yes epic yes. yeah and he seemed he seemed uh, that he said it was very normal and people were content with it and everyone really actually did like the king and <laughs> it was mm -hmm. like great yes That's he's a representative he's yeah, a representative it was so nice of the to hear an opinion Cool. Yes. Are there any words within this document that you were unfamiliar with or any terms? Mm, I don't think so. How I about the go. job of a, a copywriter? They say co copywriter in the in the text. No, copywriter is the one that's got the permission to uh, he's the author of the not not the the one that has the permission to the right of the document. Yeah, the copywriter is the person who who actually writes the words in the advertisements. Mm -hmm. There's the copywriter and on the other side is the art director. So the art director puts together the pictures and the copywriter writes the actual words in an advertisement, whether and it's if, TV or in print. Yes, if you want to get a copy you need to ask permission to the copywriter and the act direct. Mm, no. No? No. But uh, then I got it wrong. That's okay. It's not uh it's not a very a term that probably most actual like English speakers know because it's an advertising term. Uh, but there in advertising when you have an ad like this, this Add with the the search terms. There's one person who creates the images in the ad, so the woman's face and the Google search bar, and there's one person who actually writes the words in the ad. So the person who wrote the tagline that says uh, women should have the right to make their own decisions, that person was the copywriter. So it's a job title for a person in advertising. But you wouldn't have to approach this person if you wanted permission to use it. You would have to probably approach the UN or the company who's who's putting the advertisement out there. So the copywriter doesn't have any ownership of the advertisement. Ah, uh, I I am, I thought the he had the rights for the article itself. Ah uh, no 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 just the just the ad he's the person that wrote the words in the advertisement. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. It's probably not a word or a term you'll see too often, but it's good to know. Cool. Um, and then at the bottom, actually under the under the photos, they did a search, just because they were curious. They continued doing searches and they compared it from women to men. Uh, and it's interesting to see what the results are. So in the first one they have men should always pray, not get married, wear makeup, pay for dates, and be what they seem. Mm -hmm. And then they have men shouldn't wear shorts, wear flip-flops, marry, <laughs> another one with marry, be jealous or hit women. And men cannot be feminists, be trusted, get HIV from women, 
pick up chair, live without women. So the male ones are, are actually quite different from, from the, the female ones. The male ones are all over the place and have to do with clothing, like shorts and flip-flops. Um, and there's actually some positive statements for men in there as well versus the ones, uh, search terms for women, I think. But it's an interesting comparison. Yes, it says, see more colors. <laughs> women can see more colors. See, that see was their positive color. search. <laughs> yes. I didn't know that. <laughs> All right, well, do you have any more uh, questions before we end the class? No. No, no, thank you. It and are was, you taking a break now, or are you continuing? No, I'm continuing with <laughs> Kurt's class. Okay. But my husband is preparing breakfast, so I don't know how I'm okay. going to handle with breakfast <laughs> and Kurt's class. <laughs> Kurt's class is going to be on a movie. Uh, I don't know. It might be an American movie called $186 to Freedom. That is yeah. a... a an American man in a Peruvian um, jail mm -hmm. uh, that it's uh, being stored. I don't know how 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 to put it. Uh, the the people in charge of the prison yeah. uh, want money from him in order to release him, okay. and he becomes a. Uh, a friend of the communist mm -hmm. uh, prisoners in Peru. Oh, interesting. He told me yesterday about this film yeah. and now I see it posted in, yeah. the, in the schedule. Cool, it sounds good. Is it a documentary or is it um, a film? It's an, I don't know, it's under... Uh, it's under um, uh, it's under um, what is it? TV and film. So okay. I don't know whether it's a film or a TV. It's a, 186 dollars to freedom. Okay, I'm gonna put it on my list of movies to watch. Okay. So enjoy your next class and the rest of your Sunday, and I'll see you soon. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye.